Hey everybody, my name is Chris Hendricks and I'm going to hopefully teach you how to make a virtual bingo game that you can play with your class, with your family, with your friends, whoever. So um, we are going to start by going to a site called Flippity. So I'm going to go to Flippity, two Ps, and then it's a .net, so you'll have to include that. As you scroll down, they've got all sorts of resources that you might be interested in in particular. But I am most interested in this flippity bingo. So I'm going to click the template. And this is going to take about maybe 30 seconds for it to open. After you, you do have to select make a copy. So um, that's a non negotiable. All right, here we go. A couple things that you'll want to notice as this is loading up you cannot get rid of the blue bar. So don't delete this first row. That said, because, well, unless you want to play state capital bingo with your class or with your friends or family, you're going to want to get rid of all the states and all the capitals. So I am going to select those and drag down all the way to the bottom to Wyoming and Cheyenne and get rid of those. Um, in most cases, a lot of bingo games have numbers all the way up into about 75. Some games are a little different. So if I want to keep my game at 75 numbers, I'm going to go down here and add an additional 16 rows. So I deleted the 1,000, and I just put in add 16. There, now we have numbers um, all the way row to 76. Now, if we go to the top, the reason we I added 16 to get 76 was because that top row is taken. So right here in row 2, I'm going to add the number 1 in that first cell. Then I'm going to go below and add number two. And the reason I did that is because if I select those two boxes and now drag them to the bottom, I will get my sequential numbers in order, one through 75. All right. Um, now, the next thing, this particular page, this is where you could go if you want to change like the header from just saying bingo to uh, background color to indicator color. Um, and then also if you want to change the text in free space for, to something else. So these are some little modifications that you can make later on. Um, the next step is to come to this first to this page to check out your link. Now, the big thing that it shows you in row four um, is don't forget to publish the spreadsheet first. If you don't publish the spreadsheet, you simply won't be able to go any further. So to do that, we are going to go to... Um, we're going to press file and then we will go to publish to the web and it will take a minute again, not quite a minute, but are you sure you want to publish? You have to publish it to the web in order for this to work. So now we've got a published, um, document. Basically it's been given a unique web address so I can exit out of here. And now when I press on my link here, it's going to work. We're going to open up to our bingo cards. So our list of terms, in this case, the numbers 1 through 75 are displayed. Um, and then also our cards are right here. So one thing that I did not do when I played against my family was I didn't give them this URL. Had I done this, as the directions say, if I send them either this link by email or if I send them this QR code, they would each get their own unique bingo card, which actually probably would save me a lot of time. I'll show you what I did. Um, but seeing this, it's probably what I did probably isn't the most efficient strategy. But what I did was I did create 20 boards. So I'm going to press print. Um, and if it takes a minute to load, which it did last time, uh, I'll either talk um, and, oh, I'm just going to pause for a minute. All right, so I'm back. We've got our bingo card here. Um, and as you can see, um, I'm going to change my printer from my own printer or school printer to a PDF. And by changing it to a PDF, that allows me to um, save this document. Um, so I'm going to press save. And I may have just deleted my picture. Hopefully that's okay. Otherwise, I'm still here, I guess. So I'm going to press save. And with this file, I'm going to, I can just keep it as bingo on flippity.net. Um, I have created in my Google Drive a folder where I'm going to start to keep all of this stuff. 
So I saved it to the, to the computer. I'm gonna upload that file to my virtual bingo folder. Here is my bingo on flippity cards. Remember, I did 20 of them as that's uploading. If you wanted to play with 30 people, if you want to play with 70 people, our family had like 50 people. So I did like, um, so that everybody could have two game boards. I did double boards. So everybody um, printed, I printed enough boards for everybody to have like, you know, um, two, which we had about 40 people playing. So that was a lot of boards. Um, so you can change that number and then you can just go back here, print, save as save it as a PDF. So here are our cards. I'm also going to save this um, flippity bingo. Um, I'm gonna move this to that same location. So I've got it all in one spot. Here's my virtual bingo. I'm gonna move it to there so that I can come back to it and find it. And eventually it's gonna show up, there it is. Okay, now the next thing that you're going to wanna do is um, if you are choosing to print boards for people, which here's what your printed boards will end up looking like. Here's 20. They're each going to have their own unique name. Now, um, as you'll notice, in traditional bingo, um, the smaller numbers are usually in that first column, and then they sequentially get bigger as you go into the O column. If, As you'll notice, you're not going to be calling like B27, or you're not going to be calling like I1. Um, if you go back to the call sheet, you're just going to be calling numbers. Okay, let me show you how this call sheet works, and then we'll maybe get into some of the logistics. Um, oh, I just turned my camera back on, so um, maybe it was on the whole time, but I, this is the first time I'm seeing myself in about a minute or two. Okay, so let's say you've just finished game one, or you don't want to call the numbers in numerical order. Right here, if you just press shuffle, it gives you your new list of numbers in the order that you want to call them. And what's kind of nice is you can check them, as you're playing. So after you call the number, you just check it. And once somebody calls their bingo and you give them a good bingo, you can press clear, you can press shuffle, and now you've got a whole new list of numbers. Okay, so what I ended up doing, I'm gonna go back to my um, bingo cards. So I had family all over the Midwest that we were um, sharing this with. So I ended up going into the cards that I downloaded um, once I was able to, I did print. Um, and then for each family, if it was like a family of four, I did print again. Um, and this time, so there was some keeping track. Um, I did a custom print and I did like pages one to four went and then I saved it again. Um, I pressed save and, um, Again, I just changed it, the name to like fam one, and then maybe one, one to four, just so I knew that that was family, family one cards, one to four. Okay. And then I press save. Um, and then I might've done it again for all my next couple families. Now, when I go back here again, just to kind of keep track, I uploaded that file that I just created. And there it is, fam one, cards one through four. And it's gonna upload here in a second, depending on how quick my internet is tonight. Um, there it comes. Okay, so then really the last thing that I did here was um, I just started emailing these cards as attachments to all my different family and friends that were going to play. So um, obviously, in looking back, probably the quickest thing here to do is to share this link and this URL. I would imagine though, um, if it's a people wanting new cards every time, um, they would have to print this or um, or if they might have to print it like eight times if they've got eight people, you know. Um, the other thing that we ran into is some of our friends didn't have, um, some of our friends didn't have their own uh, printer. So the suggestion was, here's your card, just, you know, make your own card at home on plain paper. So um, one last little thing that I wanted to show you is um, if you want to have a little bit of fun with your design, if you click on new and you go to like a Google drawing. Um, so I'm going to open a Google drawing and I'll try to make this quick. Um, our family, we played quarantine bingo. 
because of the circumstances that we're all in right now. So um, I'm just going to call this uh, VR Bingo logo. Okay. And then I'm going to insert word art and I'm going to keep it pretty plain for right now. You can jazz yours up as much as you want. So we are going to say VR Bingo. And let's say that I am totally satisfied with that. Um, I'm going to make my uh, board on Google, on Google Drawing a little smaller. Okay, so here comes my VR Bingo. Again, similar to um, what I'm going to change is back in this original document, I am going to be um, changing in the options. I'm going to change this image so that I can have, instead of what they've got here, I'm going to put in my own, which you'll notice they've got a low, they've got a URL tied on here. So um, I'm going to create my own URL. So again, to do that, I've got to say publish to the web with my new cool design. And I'm just going to say publish. Okay. And my link will come up in a minute. Don't exit out of this right away because this link that's already highlighted for you, you're going to want to press control C and then go back to that flippity board and press control V. And there is your new link. Now, color wise, like I'm not super familiar with the co color numbers. So that could be something that you could maybe explore. What are some different numbers that you could use for colors? Um, so um, now I'm, Fingers crossed that this will work. It might have been something that I had to do earlier on in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and see if when I open this, if it gives me my new um, my new bingo cards. Um, let's see if I've got my new card. So I'm just going to print one board to see if it's got my new logo on there. It may or may not. Oh, there it is. So by doing that, it changed it to the name VR Bingo which is what I was kind of fingers crossing that it would, I hoped it would do. So um, if you've got any questions, you can reach out to me um, on Twitter, chendrix512, um, and hopefully I can help you out that way. Or if you work with me in the De Pere School District, then you can also uh, send me a quick email and I'll try to help you out. So I hope that um, you enjoy your games of bingo with your friends or family.